Hello everyone, and welcome to our class video about function transformations. Our learning goal is that you will be able to perform transformations on functions and write and interpret the related function notation. And when I say that, I mean like f of x. You probably learned that in Algebra 1. Okay, so let's look at the main principle. We're going to do some investigations in class that look at this, depending on when you're watching the video, we will have already done the investigations or you're watching the video and getting ahead of the game. So nonetheless, we're going to see why these things occur during class. But here's the main gist. When we write a function, any transformation that occurs outside the function is going to affect y. And any transformation that occurs inside the function is going to affect x. Okay, so when we use the function notation f of x, remember that that represents y. The function is going to be plotted on the y-axis. And the x gets plugged in to the function. Okay, so let's take a look at how this happens with reflections. Those are generally the easiest. Okay, so... When we do a reflection, you guys are used to, with our, the transformations we've done before, that we multiply the coordinates by negative 1. Okay? We either multiply, this, multiply all the x's, or we multiply all the y's and change the sign. Okay, so let's look at a reflection over the x-axis. When we do a reflection over the x-axis, remember that we're changing y. The mapping that we've had associated with this is x comma negative y. Okay, so we're taking y and we're changing the sign. We're multiplying by negative 1. In function notation, this has to occur outside the function because it's changing y. So here's our function, f of x. If we're going to multiply y by negative 1, I'm going to put the negative outside. That's essentially saying negative y, just like we've been doing before. Because f of x is y. All right, what about a reflection over the y-axis? A reflection over the y-axis changes x. The mapping we've had associated with that is negative x comma y. Okay, so since that happens to x, that needs to occur inside the function. So I'm going to put the negative sign on the x because we're applying the negative 1 to the x. Okay, now to help this make a little more sense, we're going to use a real function, not just a general function, specifically uh, the function x squared. Okay, so if f of x is the same as x squared, as that says, then I can replace it with x squared, because that's what it means. Alright, so negative f of x would then be negative x squared. What if I have the negative inside the function? Then, because the function is being squared, then the negative would go inside the squared. Let me show you a little bit more what that means. So, f of whatever means stuff squared. Okay? So, when I write f of x, that means x squared. If I put f of b, that would mean b squared. Or I could, heck, even I could do f of hippopotamus means hippopotamus squared. It's f of whatever it is. That f is telling us that it's whatever squared. Okay? So, if I have a... Oops, sorry. Let me go back. If I have a f of negative x, then... If I, if I do f of whatever means whatever squared, then here's my whatever squared. Okay, we'll keep going. This will make more sense as we go. So, here's what we already had. Let's look at translations. Alright, so, now here's the, a twist on the main principle. Any transformation that affects y happens normally. But when we're talking about a function, any function transformation that ha affects x is going to happen backwards. Huh? Well, okay. The re you'll see the reason why as we do the investigation in class. So, 
we're just going to run with it for here. All right. So you'll figure out why x happens backwards. All right. So as we do these translations, we're going to do just a distance of two up to down to left to right to just as examples to make it a little easier. All right. So if we're going up to that's affecting y, and it's going to happen normally. So since up 2 is positive in the y direction, we'll add 2. That's just like the mapping we've been used to. In terms of the function, if f of x is x squared, that would be x squared plus 2, because again, f of x means x squared. Okay, so what do you think the transformation would be for down 2? Well, that would be y minus 2, so we are talking f of x minus 2. In terms of the actual, uh, the function example we're using, we would say x squared minus 2. The function x squared minus 2 has been moved down 2 from the original x squared. Okay, what about left 2? If you think about the mappings we've done so far, okay, then you're th probably thinking x minus 2, because 2 would be, negative 2 would be to the left in x. Okay? However, that is not the case here, because all the transformations that affect x are going to happen backwards. This also needs to go inside the function. So when I put it inside the function, instead of putting x minus 2, I'm going to put x plus 2 because that's happening backwards. You would think it would be to the right, but it's actually to the left. In terms of our actual function notation, because f of whatever means whatever squared, then f of x plus 2 would mean x plus 2 all squared. And what do you think it would be for right 2? Well, that would be f of x minus 2, because, well, it's the opposite. You would think minus 2 would be to the left, but it's actually to the right. And so we'd have x minus 2 all squared. Are you confused yet? This takes a little bit of getting used to, that's for sure. But the more practice you get, the better. Let's finally look at stretches and compressions. Okay, so with a vertical stretch, we multiply all the y-coordinates by 2. So here's my function, f of x means y, so I multiply by 2. There, that's 2y right there, 2f of x. Or using our function notation, that would be 2x squared. We're just applying the same normal transformations we're used to. A vertical compression might be something like 1 half f of x, or 1 half x squared. When we do the horizontal, however, remember it's going to go backwards. So, when, since for a horizontal stretch, we're used to multiplying all the x's by 2. Opposite of that would be 1 half x, because it has to happen backwards. So, because all of that is inside of f, that would be 1 half x all squared. For a horizontal compression, that would be the opposite. So, since we, instead of dividing by 2, would be multiplying by 2, that's the opposite. That would be f of 2x. And we've got 2x all squared. Okay, you keep, Make sure you keep this uh, video notes handy, because looking at the tables for that we've just made will be really helpful as you're working on the practice. Okay, so with that, let's do just a few examples. Okay, so in this first example, we're told that here is our function f of x equals x squared. That's the one we've kind of been working with. So there's f of x right there. It's already graphed for us. We want to graph this new function g of x. Okay, so let's look at the things that have happened to it. The 1 half is outside the function. The function being stuff squared. That's what our f of x means. So since it's outside the function, we know it's going to affect y. y is going to be changed. Since it affects y, it's going to be happening normally. So if I divide all the y's by 2, that's a vertical compression. 
Okay, so the one half is telling us we need to do a vertical compression. Then we've also got this plus two here. That's occurring inside the function because it's inside the squared. Okay, it's inside the parentheses that are being squared. That means it's going to affect x. Okay, now remember, you'd think it would be two right because it's plus two but this has to happen backwards. So instead of moving it to the right, we're gonna move it to the left. Okay, so here we go. Oh yeah, well, so what order do I do these two things in? In general, unless there are extra parentheses added to the equation, you wanna do reflections first, stretches and compression second, and translations third. This goes along with the order of operations, really. Okay, so I'm going to do a vertical compression, which means I'm going to divide all the y's by 2. To do this, look for some key points that are easy to read off the graph, like those. I'm going to take all the y's, divide them by 2. The 0 just stays 0. The ones at 1 are going to become 1 half. The ones at a y-coordinate of 4 are going to become 2. And the ones at a y-coordinate of 9 are going to become 4.5. That gives me enough so I can draw that part of the graph. Now that I've done that transformation, I need to move it two to the left. So I'm just going to move each point two to the left, just like that. That, <coughs> excuse me, those points give me enough information to draw the shape. Okay, I know that was fast, but we'll do some more examples together. There's our new function g of x. Let me put one more example in the video. So here's a function f of x equals the square root of x. So that's a new function. Okay, it's graphed there for you. And we've got another function h of x that is based off of it. We want to know the equation. We want to figure out what transformations would occur to change f of x into h of x. That would be reflecting over the x-axis that would make it look like that. That gets it in the, going in the right direction. Then to get it to be where h of x is, I would need to move it right 3. Okay, so those are the two transformations I need to do. Let's put it into our function now. Our function is the square root of x. To reflect over the x-axis, that means we're going to apply a negative y. That's going to occur outside the function because it's affecting y. So I'm going to put a negative outside the function. To apply the right 3, well, that would normally be x plus 3. It would occur inside the function, but it has to happen backwards. Okay, Inside the function needs to be inside the square root, Okay, because our function is the square root. I'm going to make the square root a little longer so it'll fit, and it'll be minus 3 because we're going backwards. There, so our new function, h of x, is negative square root of x minus 3. Whew, that was a lot of information. I probably should have split this into two videos, but oh well, you live and you learn. Okay, so we're going to do more practice on this during class, and just make sure you, eh, I'll see you guys later.